News Biscuit, real fake news. <laughs> Welcome to News Biscuit, the UK's original fake news. News Biscuit, the real reason behind the UK's £22 billion black hole. <laughs> I'm your host, Renfo, and I'm joined by three people genuinely in need of a clothing freebie. Sparkly Bob. Hello. Sketchly. Hello. And Paul L. Hello. This month sees Keir Starmer deny he accepts bribes for policy as he changes Britain's name to Versace. <laughs> <laughs> Torrential floods in Europe are seen as the first proper Brexit dividend. <laughs> well, if you're mean-spirited, yes. <laughs> um, and Trump survives another assassination attempt, proving that crowdfunding does not work. <laughs> <laughs> so that brings us to our first round user brief, where our panelists select their favourite headlines. Sketchly, what have you got? Man addicted to laxatives is diagnosed with Asperger's syndrome. Oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That feels like that, Shava. What? 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 <laughs> yeah, no, everyone, everyone's, everyone's already doing it in the head. You don't need to put yeah. it on. Joe Biden assassination attempt, just an accident with a stapler. <laughs> How is he, anyway? Oh, yeah, I keep forgetting he's president, isn't he? Still, <laughs> he keeps sort of... forgetting he's president. Yeah. That's true. <laughs> I think they're letting him have a sit down now. Now yes. they don't have to like put a broomstick up like his back to keep him up straight and not and wheel him out somewhere. He's probably not getting the special pills that they were giving him before. Clearly, before every sort of speech. Perhaps he's okay. completely lucid. This is before we maybe yes. he has been lucid all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Nuneaton restaurant closes after first week. See, oh. none eaten. You have to think about that. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I, I keep, it's I keep almost so it. clever it's not funny. <laughs> Kia explains what's at the end of the tunnel. It's Europe. <laughs> <laughs> it's the fear that he'll take us back in. When the thing is at the end of the tunnel, isn't that like the afterlife? Isn't it like death? Walk towards the light. <laughs> Yes, yeah, is that what he's <laughs> telling us as a nation to do? There's two different things, isn't there? There's the light at the end of the tunnel, as in you've been in the dark, and ah. there is the light. <laughs> or <laughs> there is a tunnel of light. You can't get these two confused. <laughs> you have very different outcomes. One's very positive, and one you're like, oh, no. <laughs> so that's why my Instagram influencer account's not been great. I've been telling everyone to walk towards the light. Yeah, <laughs> you're killing them off. I've been losing followers. Technically a death cult. <laughs> <laughs> Is that all of them then? That's that's it. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah. I, Sorry. I, I'm not saying that in a mean way. I'm just that's like, there we go. <laughs> Come right. on. I, I knew that. Well, you know. Um, okay. <laughs> uh, Sparkly Bob. Right. Uh, I think I've chosen tongue twisters as well. <laughs> um, so, Torbay Ramblers to change their name from Walkie Talkie. Oh, yeah. Well, that is very good. Again, I feel these read better than. <laughs> yes. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and best uh, compliment you can say for a joke that it reads better. <laughs> yes. yeah. Every, every stand up should uh, supply a script with the, with the program. Yeah. Oh, I just say, look, guys, we're actually going to read silently in our heads. <laughs> so I'll just stand here and you read it at the same time. And we'll laugh as loud as you like. Yes. <laughs> a second assassination attempt on Trump was absolutely, most definitely not a plan to boost his ratings <laughs> yeah. well, what, I, what i did find was striking was the fact that nobody seemed to sort of care very much second time around mm. first time so like, oh it's quite dramatic second time you're like oh yeah you've done assassinations yawn so the sequel's so... never as good as the first one no really. yeah <laughs> right. lifeguard training school goes bust orders to say there are lots of red flags <laughs> we've gone heavily on the puns haven't we so. we have <laughs> New BAFTA award, best dramatization of Prince Andrew interview. Yeah, what have we got? We've got two Prince yeah. Andrew movies. Who asked for that? I, was, well, I, mean, I didn't even ask for the original Andrew. interview, really. They could have just told me about it. <laughs> like, I, I just like. I know. <laughs> and now we're having to like relive it, like in two different ways. And oddly enough, it's not the story that we're that interested in. Andrew's no. a subplot. We want to know about Jeffrey Epstein. And all the other people that went to his island. But nobody's telling that story, I notice. Everyone's got very quiet about that story. Here, you can have Andrew. What about the others? No, nothing else. Yeah. No. Basically, the synopsis of this is Prince Andrew's an ass. And like we were like, well, yes. yeah, we yes. kind of need that. that that's, again, that's not the scoop, is it? That's no. not the scoop. Yeah. And yet that's what Remember the royal family is. and ask, what? What? Oh my God. Henry VIII would be turning in his grave. <laughs> <laughs> and sorry, my last one is donor who paid for Boris Johnson's clothes, please to be kept anonymous. <laughs> From what I've heard, I mean, Johnson does 
take lots of kind of freebies and this, that and the other. And he does. But he genuinely gets through the money. So when he dresses like a, a haystack, that's not a choice. That's actually, that's all he's left with. Because he's supporting like 28 wives and 5,000 children, isn't he? So yeah. Yeah. Um, that can't be cheap. You can't put them all in the House of Lords. <laughs> <laughs> and that hair, that doesn't maintain itself. That takes some careful <laughs> chopping, you know. What yeah, I mean? but we do so, know though he does ruffle up his hair, doesn't he? I've seen him ruffle up his hair. I've seen him with yeah. perfectly small hair and then ruffle it up. Before. <laughs> okay, yeah, because you're going. What are you doing? Has, has something flown in his hair? Is there a moth in here? <laughs> like, is he fighting off bats? He's like a top chef that does these deconstructed like meals. He's deconstructing himself as a as a person. He's like a bit of a shame he deconstructed his personality, morals, ethics. Yes, yes, like, it's all you know, apart. Every time he got on stage, hold on a minute. I have actually, I do quite like Europe. Oh, better deconstruct that. <laughs> <laughs> Paul L, what have we got? Sausages deny links to Gaza. Ha! So this was for those who missed it, and if you did miss it, this was Keir Starmer in his big, serious, oh. grown-up speech talking about Gaza, of which oh. he shouldn't really speak because his, his policies are really shocking on it. But nevertheless, he was talking about Gaza and he said the most important thing is that we free free the sausages. <laughs> and then went, oops, hostages. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and the so thing I is, doesn't matter what happens with his rest of the career now, every night oh, he's going to wake up in a cold, cold sweat going, oh, sausages. It must be an absolute nightmare to know as soon as something has left your mouth and it's been recorded and you're oh. like, I could literally solve world poverty, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. cure cancer, everything else. And when I die, <laughs> someone's going to get up. It's going to be on my bloody grave. Like sausage someone, man. Like, yeah. I was wondering if Raina was sitting next to him going, sausages, 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 sausages. <laughs> well, sausages. yes, exactly. I, I was trying to work out how it happened because, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm dyslexic. But there's no way you're reading an auto cue and and reading hostages and coming out with sausages. That's not just, <laughs> that doesn't happen, right? So there's either two two scenarios. Either one, he's really hungry and he mm. likes sausages and he's constantly mm -hmm. thinking about sausages and it just comes out. Or you're right, sketch is right. Someone just as he's walking on stage, he says, "Whatever you do, don't mention sausages." And he's gone, "What? <laughs> what? I wasn't even thinking." about sausages so you've now said and now now that's in my head and now i'm constantly don't say sausage don't say sausage and <laughs> he could have got a message saying like can you pick up some sausages when you finish <laughs> uh, this is liz truss because she's obsessed with pork markets and then mm. what takes down ed Miliband? a bacon, bacon sandwich, sandwich. And now do you think it's with us, you... oh my god she may be cleverer <laughs> than we think <laughs> Or not. Um, yeah, well, no, I mean, if you look at the sinister presences behind it, I suspect it's the, the big sausage lobby. Big sausage. That's, big, big sausage, that's, yeah. that, and he, and that, and he was, that's a website. Yeah, and he was just putting... Don't Google bit, it. You know, or do, or do, depending on, you know, how lonely you are. But yeah, so that's it. He was putting actually, you know, because he's so buyable, isn't he? He loves a freebie. He's putting in product placements now into his speeches. Another option is the guy who bought him the, the glasses had it engraved. Like yes, sausages yeah. on the lens, <laughs> and it just lined up with the auto cue. Yeah. <laughs> That's unfortunate. You shouldn't have bought those designer sausage glasses. <laughs> All right, let's stay on the same subject then. Uh, Starmer, the gift that keeps on receiving. Right. I mean, is this is going to be the whole episode. He's going to be yeah. him because he is he is a car crash. And what's <laughs> delightful about it, I think, is it's all self-inflicted. You know, sometimes. <laughs> Sometimes with some prime ministers and MPs, they're just hostage to events and or you sausage. kind of you know, sausages. <laughs> yes, there's sausages. <laughs> sausages. There's sausages to events. Yes, like yeah. Someone put up a picture of Terry Waite online and went ex sausage, <laughs> <laughs> and I thought yes, brilliant. But yes, but all of these, all of these things that are happening, all this bad press is all to do with stuff he has actually done that he didn't need to do. That's the madness of it. All the accepting <laughs> of free this and free that and free this because he's a multimillionaire he could pay for these things himself and you think if you would smart that is what you would do but he's just opened himself up to so much kind of and and the press are loving this because i know how the press work they've gone through his his um financial records and stuff for the mm. last couple of years so they've got a hundred of these stories lined up and they're yep. going to release one a day until he dies <laughs> um and, and if he was really smart he'd come out in front of it straight away he goes sorry yeah we've all had our hands in the till come to think of it it's a bad idea we're all going to stop i'm going to bring in new laws i'm going to stop it and then he you know he's he's saved his reputation but instead what he's done he's doubled down on it and he said 
said, one, I've done nothing wrong. And two, <laughs> I'm going to keep doing it. Like, <laughs> what are you on? Can you not? <laughs> he refused to bring in Leveson too. So he refused to look into the right wing press that the one's now slaughtering him. <laughs> so you're like, well, that's on you, yeah. isn't it? And of course, he's had his hand in the till for years. When he was head of the Crown Prosecution Service, he racked up hundreds of thousands of pounds, fancy limousines to take him backwards and forwards. Yeah, so he's always done this. And you'd think if there was anyone around him who was a friend, to just say, come on, Keir, for the next four years, just stop being you. And just <laughs> stop, get your nose out of the trough for just a second. You can, because he can fill his boots when he leaves. You know, when he retires, you can gravy train for life. But he can't resist it. Taylor Swift tickets, for fuck's sake. Uh, <laughs> that's the other thing. He's doing the, the, the clothing, isn't he? He's doing the clothing. Go, oh, I needed, I needed the clothing for work. It's a work thing. Taylor Swift tickets. What bit of your work did you need to And they've all done it. And he's getting, and of course, the, the press fixate on the trivia of it, but there now is plenty of evidence of them taking freebies and changing policies afterwards. So uh, when they were proposing like a big tax on Google, Google threw you know tens of thousands of pounds at them all to give them free tickets and stuff to Glastonbury. The day after, they changed their policy. <laughs> the, the biggest donation to Labour is a four million pound donation from a tax haven that specialises in in oil and and and, and guns. <laughs> Labour refused to declare it until after the election, so oh. nobody knew about it. And then they appointed one of the the lead people on this this oil tax haven to be head of their environmental group in the, in the, in the government. You're going, oh, my word, this is it. We can join <laughs> the lines together. I mean, oh, I just oh my know, word. How, how do you get those jobs? I don't know if you saw uh, the Joe Lysett dog when he went about the water companies. And it's the fact that people who, who were really high up in off what who didn't come down to the water companies, then go and work for the water companies. And mm -hmm. I just kind of want to know what level of job do I need to get that basically I could be really incompetent, possibly dodgy, and then I can just get swapped around different companies and just get loads of handouts, freebies, bungs, you know. Well, I mean, obviously I'm not at the level yet. I'm not, I'm not there. <laughs> I just kind of want to know what, what, what job titles I need to get in these companies. And then I can just kind of, and then you get paid off for being incompetent and stuff like that. You know well, what I mean? When they say, oh, they were really bad and they've killed loads of people. So we've given them like a 50 billion pound payout. To, so do they know from them. the beginning of their career, they know, ah, oh, this is the great yeah. plan and I'm going to eventually do a kind of haha switch and I'm going to switch to the other side and be evil. Or, or is it, to kind of what you're suggesting you're incompetent you're really incompetent you're incredibly incompetent and you're so panicked like oh shit i'm gonna go to prison for all of this and there's a knock on the door you think oh fuck it's the police and no someone opens yeah. up the door and goes here's a huge bag of money come over to the evil side you won you're like oh it's like it's like the reveal at the end of kind of willy wonka isn't it it's like a kind of oh all along it was it's a test to see if i'm the most were... evil child in the kingdom i thought you were suggesting when people say what do you want to be when you grow up i want to be a firefighter I want to be a librarian. I want to be a teacher. I want to be incompetent. I want to be incompetent. <laughs> <laughs> I paid loads of money. Right, Paul, have you got any more after that long rant about the ridiculous <laughs> state of Starmer? I, I think safe. we'll leave Starmer alone. Now let's get on. Uh, Nail-biting finish at World Anxiety Awards. <laughs> the so others are smiling then it's just not laughing oh yeah sorry <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's all in the delivery I find yeah, uh, so. yeah. smiling in... on the inside <laughs> yeah <laughs> inventor of rear view mirror looks back on his career there you go <laughs> <laughs> now, now I'm really like covering up for it. I'm just it's talking at the end, so no, no one knows. <laughs> Insect-based food creates buzz. <laughs> Has anyone had any insects? By the way, I mean not accidentally, uh, like a fly flying yeah, into your mouth. But... Yeah, because you swallow like eight spiders a year. No, or something I, ridiculous. I don't believe that. <laughs> <laughs> That's, that's Why would funny. I lie to you about this? <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. I don't know what your game is. So uh, uh, <laughs> I'm in the pay of big spider. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, no, you do, don't you? Because you, uh, in a lifetime, they reckon there's a and yeah, spiders crawl over you. They've done and they've what? done it. They've done it in scientific and they've actually done it in scientific kind of conditions. Put someone in a room and they've put ink on the spider's feet, right? Oh, don't. And, and then the down. next morning, you've got literally hundreds and hundreds of little black dots all over your face as the spider has just like wandered happily all if over. I, if I and, were and... in that experiment, I would not sleep again. No. 
<laughs> oh, are they sure the spiders aren't going, oh, look at this. This is hilarious. They put ink on my thing. Right, watch this. I'm going to flick it at their face. Like, I'm <laughs> flicking it. Watch them freak out when they wake up. They are going to go absolutely ballistic. <laughs> well, your version of it is just as scary that there's a spider next to me flicking his legs at me. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, that's just spiders. as worrying. But yeah, so statistically, that. one or two get a bit cocky with that's the flicking it. and they have over flicked <laughs> and they fall in your mouth. they've gone. Yeah. <laughs> our next round is True Biscuit, where our panel has to guess which is the real headline and which is the fake one. Paul, we're going to start with you. Train, which was cancelled after squirrels bored and refused to leave. <laughs> Are these squirrels refusing to leave because they don't have the right ticket or... The spokesperson... For the, the squirrels. squirrels. <laughs> <laughs> said, squeak, 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 squeak. <laughs> for, the, for the train operator. Oh, oh okay. sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, it boarded, said they boarded without tickets, reaching <laughs> railway by- bylaws. So if they'd had tickets, they'd have been fine to travel as squirrels. Well, yes. So we this could be, what the, we could take could any. I could a ticket. So, yeah, I would. Just your yeah, shits and giggles. I'd be like, oh, is that the problem? Oh, he's with me. Where, yeah. Are, they, yeah, where are they going? I'll just get them a single. <laughs> <laughs> so can I, can, can I bring on any animal now onto the train with me with, you know, as long as I've got a ticket? You have to have a ticket for your animal. <laughs> but, I, but you're letting me bring on any animal? Of course. But as long as you buy a ticket. <laughs> Yeah. yeah the tickets oh, yeah. <laughs> I get a train every day and I and I see your dog on there yeah, cause, ticket. um I but no I've never seen a ticket inspector <laughs> <laughs> ask a the dog for, where's the ticket go on yeah well you, you ask the owner I assume when the owner shows their ticket they show the dog's ticket as well is the, is the oh. dog not grown up enough to get his own ticket <laughs> the <laughs> passengers alerted stuff and they tried <laughs> to lure the squirrels off the train at Red Hill with snacks and then then Nut, they nuts based snacks i assume yeah, yeah. but that then wouldn't have could... worked because that wasn't their stop <laughs> yes. no, they, they wanted crazy. <laughs> and then they tried then they went like the other way and tried to force them off with brooms i don't know where they got the broom from in <laughs> also but, never seen yeah i've never sat in a carriage and everyone's got a broom <laughs> i'd assume it's a sort of witch's coven <laughs> there's never cleaning equipment on a train like a... brooms <laughs> yeah <laughs> That's more implausible than the squirrel. <laughs> yes. <Yeah. laughs> um, I don't know. People have, there seem to be lots of there was brooms on the train. <laughs> and then they tried to chase them off using an accordion. Where have they got the accordion from? <laughs> I mean, it's I don't know. Well, I mean, yes. So, I mean, they signed off. This the spokesperson said we attempted to remove them at Red Hill, but one refused to leave and was returned to Reading to bring to an end to this nutty tale. I'm going to say true. <laughs> I love squirrels. Yeah, I, I know. On my I can, train. You, people can't see your face, but your face is all lit up. It's like you've regressed to some sort of childhood. Um, what, was it, what was it? The Tufty Club? Yeah, I was yeah. at Tufty Club. Oh, that was probably before my time. Oh, you've made sparkly <laughs> off <with old>. <laughs> <laughs> Well, hang on. When, when was that, though? 1947. Yeah. Okay, yeah, no. <laughs> No, it would have been like early 80s, early 80s. Probably. Oh, then that was that was in my time then. I, I just can't remember. The only they just didn't have roads where you lived. <laughs> yeah, you were just crossing out behind the vans. You didn't care. I, I remember the, the boy with the cat. That's the, okay. the high Where are we going with this? Yeah. Oh, yeah. this is a, okay. Charlie says... Yeah. <laughs> Charlie's, Charlie's having a brilliant. stroke. Yeah. <laughs> Charlie's possessed by the devil. Right. <laughs> <laughs> You know what? I wasn't sure, but then I think the fact that they went, it's against the bylaws because they didn't have a ticket, makes it sound like it's true. It's, it's got a deg- <laughs> it's got the ring of pettiness that makes yes. it feel... Yeah. What it is uh, true. <laughs> <laughs> Sketchly, tell us a story. Are you sitting comfortably? Yeah. Then we'll dig in. Has it got squirrels in it? <laughs> no, but hippopotamuses... <laughs> <laughs> you can't get one of those on a train. Was on a bus. I would de- yeah. I actually I would definitely stop the train if there's a hippo on it because hippos yeah. are scary. Actually, haven't we? Sorry to interrupt. We've had a story once about a horse going on a bus, didn't we? Yeah. Oh no. Was it a pony? A pony getting on a bus. Yes. And wasn't that one true as well? Yes. They just want to have good public transport, and can you blame them? Like, okay, what what does your sorry, hippo do? Hippopotamuses can become airborne. For substantial periods of time. If you have a large enough catapult, yes. Or a large enough canister of helium. 
<laughs> they become airborne. Oh, so them two getting on a- if they got on a plane, yes, they become airborne. I suppose <laughs> technically they become airborne. Mm-hmm. Oh, how are they? That's what they this <laughs> how are they? La- how are they being launched? What? What? What is? What is happening? They're, they're self-propelled. That what they? Is it like a pogo thing? Are they sort of bouncing up and down, or are they like leaping off a cliff? A hippo go. A hippo go. No, no, that it's just a natural thing that they do. Is it? They can remain in the air for up to zero point three seconds at a time. That's not oh, well very done. long. It's not point three seconds substantial. Because <laughs> I tell you what, if a plane I was on, when we're going to be up for a substantial period of time, and then 0.3 seconds later crashed. Yeah, I would well, be saying I don't think we even left the ground. Really. Yes, I was going <laughs> to say it's not technically a crash. It's just a, yeah. a mere bump, <laughs> a bit turbulence. Yes, we're there. Are we? Are we really there? <laughs> well, we're still here. No point three seconds of travel. <laughs> this just sounds like a hippo that's just walking. In and the maybe normal... on a trip. <laughs> yes. Ah. And a scientist happened to be on hand with the stopwatch. Yeah. Yeah. Why was the study done in the first place? Had reports been circulating that? There were flying hippos everywhere. And they were like, no, we need to look into this. I, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> that, 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 You've given where, us where, very <laughs> little information, I'll be honest. I'm, I'm, I'm trying. Well, the thing is, I mean, I, I don't want to give anything away. No, do, clearly. Um, <laughs> the, the, they, they weigh up to 8,000 pounds. Because it's facts now. <laughs> yeah. They're spelt with an H. Yeah, <laughs> this that is all tells going. us why it's yeah. why. I mean, um, 8,000 pounds is kind of making this feel like this isn't true because thought, yeah okay, they swim this, though don't they they swim hippopotamus they, swim. they do swim they do so swim. is it something to do with like being in the water and just i don't know no um <laughs> like a duck yeah like a duck just like a duck mummy <laughs> 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 are those ducks there awfully big ducks <laughs> um, and a bit mean looking <laughs> yes the ducks are coming at us mummy <laughs> No brain out of them, darling. We'll be fine. <laughs> On the basis of that, I think that just sounds like they've tripped over. So I say that's a no. I think that's not. I'm going to say it's true. Because in my thinking here, remember when the, they did the horse running? Yeah. Oh, and it leaves yeah, the yeah, ground. Yeah. That is a hippopotamus flying, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> that's the issue is anyone can say it. I mean, what was the wording? Uh, leave the ground. It can, wasn't can flying. Become was airborne. Become, yeah. So anyone can become airborne. And I mean, I fell down the stairs in August. I, I was probably airborne for a bit of that time. Yeah. <laughs> Didn't really feel like an achievement at the time. But now, <laughs> and it's the reverse. It. And it's the reverse then true. So if you just take a photograph of a bird that's on the floor, <laughs> can you just claim that birds can't fly? <laughs> According to that, it's true. Uh, but it is exactly as Paul said, which is why I didn't want to give any information away. <laughs> because it, it, when, when they're running, oh. there is a point where all their feet are off the ground. By like a millimetre. Oh, that's not... That, I mean, that is airborne, but... There is you it, go. Is it... Stop right so, there. So what we've discovered <laughs> is if Paul, who is obviously one of News Biscuit's finest, but if Paul had been on the scientific board that day, he would have seen through this ruse... Instantly, yeah. whereas all these other Nobel <laughs> Prize winning individuals like, oh, yes, no, that is good evidence. <laughs> and they'll be, how, how do you know this, Paul? I said, you ever chased a squirrel around a carriage? Yeah, <laughs> with a broom. With a broom, yes. <laughs> Barkley Bob. A petition to have Ticklecock Bridge in Castleford to be renamed a stroke slash underpass um, <laughs> as we raised because <laughs> it calls the structure sexist and misogynistic. So this comes after councillors couldn't keep a straight face in a council meeting when discussing giving the bridge a facelift. And if agreed, the new name will be celebrated with a blue plaque in the first week of October. True. Wow. True. <laughs> what are they changing it to? Uh, stroke snatch underpass. <laughs> it's true. It's true. Promise. Yeah, true. Yeah. And what was sorry? What was the original again? Because we just like hearing you say this. <laughs> Tickle cock bridge. See what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this on the loop on our website for people who want like a little pornographic element. <laughs> and it's just going to be sparkly Bob arousing people. Barry White uh, in the background. Well, and then going on to say, tell them to go and look at bigsausage.com. Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> what was the original one again? <laughs> Tickle Cock Bridge. <laughs> and it's renamed Stroke Snatch Underfast. That's the Tickle petition. Cock Bridge. bridge. And Carlson. See, Cock Bridge, uh, you know, obviously he's rude, but I can imagine there's something being called Cock Bridge, but Tickle Cock. Oh, you know, like in the medieval times, that would have been a right laugh. <laughs> I mean, you know what would have been happening under our bridges is exactly what is 
Describes. <laughs> Where the village prostitute would meet the. It, it does oh, sound true until the renaming of it, which what? is. What's wrong with that? <laughs> what are you trying to say, Paul? Was it, all, it, all it's saying, Paul, is that the, the clientele visiting yeah, the prostitute. The same, it's the same yeah. aged prostitute. She's four hundred and seven, but the you know she's got a much more diverse group of individuals who are coming to have their underpasses tickled and their or, their cock stroked. Or she's getting as much out of it as as her clientele. Ah, yes. so she's no longer doing it for the the money. She's just doing it for the sheer love of the art. <laughs> but the, I thought the issue was they're giggling when it's stroke cock. So why will they not giggle <laughs> when they're giggling? No, don't get cock. it right. They're giggling when it's tickle cock. <laughs> tickle uh, cock. Sorry, it's sorry. A stroke snatch. <laughs> <laughs> Why won't they? Yeah, make sure you're stroking the right thing that. and tickling the right thing there, Paul. <laughs> yes, come Otherwise... on. Let's have some dignity here, Paul. Come on. You're I've been gonna... known to get confused. You're right, Paul, insofar as, yes, the other one is is equally funny, yes. Blue plaque on either side, reading the opposite. Yeah. Yes. So yes. when you're going under one way and coming out the other. So you're tickling or... cock one way and stroking yes. Or, or yeah. they could just be, you know, just go meta with it and just call it fuck bridge. <laughs> Uh, sketch that you've been there. What is this, true or false? <laughs> <laughs> I want it to be true desperately, but I think it's going to be a false one. Oh, okay. And Paul, you've worked there for many years. <laughs> I've cleaned it up. I've used to clean it uh... <laughs> with your with broom. Your <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to say it's false. It's a news bistic story. Yeah. Did you say news bistic? <laughs> yeah, that's what I call it. <laughs> 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 I don't call it the proper name. I, uh... <laughs> you know what? It's half and half here. Yeah, that's false. They're not going to rename it. But it is true that the councillors couldn't keep a straight face when they're discussing <laughs> it in a meeting and kept bursting out in giggles all the time every time someone said the actual just like you guys did as well. <laughs> but it is false, yeah. Partially false. There, Partially is, a false, called, yeah. there is a place called the original Tickle, Yeah, there is a place called Ticklecock Bridge in Castleford, yeah. Right. <laughs> and we're, at the end of the podcast, we'll put up directions for you to get there for research yeah. purposes if anyone's interested. Right, we should have time just to zip around very, very quickly. We'll see if we get around to some more tributes. See if we squeeze them in. So, sketch. Did we start with you? Yeah. What have you got? Uh, we're starting with Paul. Oh, do we shut up then, uh, <laughs> Paul? <laughs> Stop interrupting. Are you on another sketch, one? <laughs> it's an interview that in, with uh, where Ingo Star gave, and he's disowned the Yellow Submarine. <laughs> Dis- what do you mean he's disowned it? Well, he's pretended he wasn't involved in it. No, he's, he's just said it as uh, ludicrous. He did Thomas the Tank Engine. What the? What like Hello. you know submarines <laughs> beneath him? He took it a bit. He's gone. I wouldn't. He's gone. Well, it's silly now because I wouldn't live in an octopus's <laughs> garden. <laughs> Oh my god! Oh my, and I'm is, not a walrus. No, uh, sorry. Is, is, he's done with is, the drugs, is he? Is Ringo that is Ringo that dumb that he thought the story, the song was, was literal? Real. He's come out and said, "I wouldn't actually like to live in Octopus's garden." He is not. But that's a separate song. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Where every artist takes their song literally, <laughs> but I'm living in it. <laughs> Abba saying God Waterloo we've got PTSD <laughs> I think I think it's because he said it because you know he now realises how you know we've come to know how intelligent octopuses are and he's just like I wouldn't want to yeah but that's a different song <laughs> octopus is gone it's not yellow submarine why are you banging on about the octopuses Paul has he disavowed the wrong song I see, I think um, he's got confused has he um, been taking the pills that Biden was on <laughs> no hang on no he's the, he's He's actually no. He's I think he's got confused it because he's uh, he's disowned Yellow Submarine and I think he's disowned Octopus's Garden in the same breath. Didn't he sing that song though? Did he sing that song about shagging sixteen-year-olds? Sweet, sweet, yeah, she's uh, sweet sixteen. He's all right with that. He's not disavowing that one. That he's still he's doing. He's in that interview. I think he said he stopped doing that song as well because it got a bit awkward. Because obviously, <laughs> no one in his audience was sixteen. I assume. What he likes? What he when he sung it, he would pick a sixteen-year-old out in the audience on the stage. And then deliberately, on the stage. And then on the stage. <laughs> yeah, he had to sit on his knee <laughs> and then sing the song. To the house. Oh my god! Oh, that's not creepy at all. That's not. <laughs> That's not it, problematic. It was done. It's it was no done fun in his if yellow there's no submarine. sixteen-year-olds yeah. in the audience. <laughs> it was. It was when he threw in the interlude of Thomas oh. Tank's theme tune. Oh yes, yeah. that's how he lures oh, them up. Oh, yeah. oh my god, it's Ringo. It's true. I'm gonna say false. Like, 
<laughs> you can't be taking it literally, surely. That's like that doesn't, everything you've sung about doesn't mean it's true. <laughs> this uh, to save Sparkly Bob's sanity. This is false. It's a oh mystic story. Oh, thank God for that. <laughs> And whoever wrote it doesn't know the difference between Yellow Submarine and... Marina, uh, I can add words with the editorial team at Susie's Biscuit. Until you said it, I was reading it and I thought, yeah, he's right there. Uh, someone... <laughs> <laughs> Whoever's written that, he's got that completely around. Made it into the book, though, so... <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> MPs filmed offering services for votes. Well, yeah, we've just covered Keir Starmer. What... <laughs> <laughs> this is true and biscuit ha- and yeah. sausages. Move on. <laughs> what, what kind of services are they offering? Are we suggesting oh, <laughs> any, anything people want? What uh, MPs are actually promising to start to do their well, job? And- it says here Westminster was rocked by a further scandal today after several Labour ministers and other MPs were filmed approaching their constituents and offering to lobby the government on their behalf in return for their vote. Isn't that how democracy is supposed to work? That's what I thought. I know Nigel Farage refuses to meet his constituents, doesn't he? He doesn't do any of those, uh, what they call, what are they call when they meet the Because um, the uh, surgeries. surgeries. Yeah. There's a reason why they call Let them surgeries. The is it because the MPs always ask him to get undressed? <laughs> <laughs> Tr- <laughs> trousers says, down. I was told it was a surgery. Oh, <laughs> this is the most implausible like... story we've had. Yeah. I'll be honest. The <laughs> idea that an MP might actually do their job. Well, Paul, do MPs actually do their jobs? <laughs> <laughs> it's the approaching them that I don't get. You know, yeah. like the well, actually meeting ordinary yeah. people that that stretches it beyond the the bounds of credulity. Yes, yes, that for me. Yes, that's got to be uh, false. <laughs> I think some do, but I think this might be false. So, uh, so you're saying <laughs> in the main, uh, and yeah. I think you worked in the House of Commons. Yeah, you, I know. You so <laughs> you you have knowledge. This you say in the main. Most MPs it's, do not do their job. No, it's, 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 it it's approaching. It's approaching them. Mm. I think, like some of them would go, if it was a thing that happened in the constituency, then they would say, "I yeah. know what I'm representing," but I don't know whether they would. They would kind of seek them out and go. So, so oh, for I've you, it's the same. Up. The same point that Paul's making. You do not believe that they would choose to meet an ordinary person of their own volition. <laughs> Both of you, that's the hill that you. Think. <laughs> it is. It is a news biscuit. Yes. Yeah. There, we yeah. saw through that straight yeah. away. We know uh, you're about to trick us with the MPs doing their must jobs. Must try harder. Yes. Sparkly Bob, one last one. Right. Driver to face court with too many offences to mention after using a bucket as a car seat and pliers to steer. What? The police said it was the most unroadworthy car they'd ever seen after it had no bumper, no front lead headlights, a flat tyre. But just to clarify, they were using mole grips as pliers and they are able to lock into position. So there's a little extra thing there. So I think that just reassures us. Was he on a a skateboard? (laughs) Or one of the carts that they make in like American films when they're looking at childhood and they all like knock together some sort of cart that's like really fancy steering. And you think, oh, I wish we could do that. (laughs) It never happens. Uh, Who was that? (laughs) But also at what point do you give up on a car? You know, I, I would feel when there's no wheel and no seats, yeah, I'm, so I'm no longer seeing go. it as seaworthy at that point. I'm... If I've got to stand to steer, even if there was a steering wheel, I think I'd be questioning those choices. I think as soon as the steering wheel went, I think I would go, I wonder whether this is going to pass its MOT. <laughs> <laughs> Did he claim to be in the, a race called the Cannonball Run? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because it, it's one of those things, actually, as a police officer, if you pull over someone and they say they're in a cannibal run, you have to actually let them go. Yeah. It's true. It, the people don't know that. It's like a bylaw thing. It's like squirrels having uh, oh, tickets. if you've got a squirrel in the car with yeah, you, then yeah, that's, right. that's almost like a, yeah, complete... As long as there's a broom. Yeah, uh, yeah stick to us with the Matley. <laughs> <laughs> Wacky races. Actually, what you're describing just sounds like the clown car that Keir Starmer drives. <laughs> Everything just falling off. Uh, are you sure this is roadworthy, Mr. Starman? Oh, yeah, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the conference. <laughs> <laughs> Where were they caught, by the way? Were they Norfolk. just. Oh, well, that's oh, oh, <laughs> 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 you say that, just a matter of fact. That's the only yeah, car Norfolk. in Norfolk. <laughs> and I assume they were young scallywags as well. No, quite an old guy. <laughs> Sorry? Just an old guy driving on, on a bucket <laughs> and a, with some pliers. <laughs> oh. And there I you go, thought, Renfo, young This was his car. This I just assumed car. it was like young lads who found a car and just uh, gone off, no. but it's an old guy and that's his yeah. car. What did they pull him over for? Was it the, the dodgy headlight? I thing? think it was the front light. 
yeah, yeah. front headlights. And then the police officer was just like, oh, God. <laughs> it's like turning up to what a yeah. crime scene and discovering like 100 bo- dead bodies. You're like, oh, God, what have I uncovered? This is more than I'm ready for. Um, Did he ask the, the police officer to hold the door up for a second while he winds the window down? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, step away from the bucket, sir. <laughs> Put your hands on the boot, but gently, gently, <laughs> might fall apart. I'll say true, yeah. Okay, Paul? I'm going to go true on this one. I... Yeah, true. <laughs> and only, I know, I'm only funny, not that long, like only a few years ago, like sort of 2018 or something. <laughs> And that brings us to the end of this episode. And I can reveal this month's winner is anyone not owning a pager. <laughs> and I'd like to thank Sketchly. See ya. Sparkly Bob. Thanks. And Paul L. Goodbye. And I leave you with these headlines. Prisoners protest overcrowding by staging a lock-in. <laughs> Drone operator charged with controlling behaviour. <laughs> and photo of arable farm may have been cropped. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> You've been listening to News Biscuit, free to read and free to write for. We accept submissions from any budding satirist, young or old. Visit newsbiscuit.com to submit headlines, stories, and to support new writers. News Biscuit, real fake news. I suspect Keir Starmer will be 50% of the episode, given he has provided so much comic relief. <laughs> Yeah, PR nightmare, but satirist gold. I was really worried when Biden stepped down. I thought, you know, what are we going to do? You know, all that material is just gone. (laughs) It's true, isn't it? Every time you think, oh, bollocks, yeah, yeah, Trump has stepped off the stage or whatever, then some other moron comes along, you go, oh, thank goodness. There never seems seems to be a shortage of that, does there? But don't forget, we've got the Tory leadership lot coming up with their Conservative concert. I mean, uh, concert, (laughs) concert conference next week. It will be like a concert. Kemi's in. Surely we're doing a joke about her saying the working class thing <laughs> ah, that was good wasn't it that she's That's working like, class yeah, working yeah. class because she once worked in a mcdonald's no that you know. that that definitely doesn't count as working class i suppose it means from her perspective she might have met someone who's working class and maybe yeah. she thinks it sort of rubs off yeah i, I mean oh. i once saw buckingham palace from the outside so you may now refer to me as the queen <laughs> 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 because that's how it works and i once heard something funny and now write for news biscuit <laughs> <laughs> that's not a prerequisite though is it no no it's not no don't worry paul you're all right <laughs>